Awake fiber optic intubation is a technique which allows us to place an endotracheal tube into the airway of the patient before they lose consciousness. When loss of consciousness may result in loss of airway, then awake intubation should be considered. For success in this technique, you need patient acceptability and an experienced anaesthetist. It should not be rushed. It takes time to be successful. The advantages of this technique are obvious. The patient is breathing spontaneously. They have normal muscle tone, so they can maintain their own airway. And also, they can be cooperative and even help with the procedure. Consequently, there is no time pressure and therefore a successful intubation is more likely to be achieved. Patient consent. The difficulty is having to explain to the patient the details of the procedure without increasing their anxiety. This is a tricky problem. I say to the patient that I'll be numbing their nose and their throat with local anaesthetic spray, which initially is, tastes very bitter but this will soon pass. Then I will pass a very thin, flexible telescope down the back of their nose and into their throat, spraying as we go local anaesthetic spray. Each time I spray, they will cause a brief bout of coughing, but this also will soon pass. When the fibroscope has reached the uh, trachea, then the patient will slowly drift off to sleep. I must emphasize this procedure must not be an ordeal for the patient. They may well have to come back in the future to have a similar procedure done. The next topic to consider is pre-medication. For a suspected difficult airway, a sedative pre-med should be considered with great care and only given to the highly anxious patients. When you consider the partially obstructed airway with or without stridor, a sedative pre-medication is totally contraindicated. However, a drying agent can be very useful in uh, increasing the efficiency of the local anaesthetic and also improving visibility at fibroscopy. Intramuscular glycopyrrolate on the ward 30 minutes before arrival in an anaesthetic room can give very good conditions for, for action. If, however, you have been unable to give this on the ward, intravenous glycopyrrolate, 0.2 milligrams, given on arrival in the anaesthetic room, can usually give exit conditions after 10 minutes to 15 minutes. Before we use the fiber optic scope, we need to check seven things. We need to connect the camera, connect the light source, focus the camera, perform the white balance, Make sure that the orientation mark is at 12 o'clock position. Connect the suction and load the endotracheal tube before we are ready to use it. Need to connect the camera. Connect the light source. Focus the camera perform the white balance, make sure that the orientation mark is at 12 o'clock position, connect the suction, load the endotracheal tube. The drugs that are required to perform the awake fiber optic intubation are as follows. Uh, the first drug that you need to give is glycopyrrolite, uh, which is your uh, drying agent, anti uh, 
the dose is uh, 3 micrograms per kilogram uh, or in practical terms you just give one ampule which contains 200 micrograms. Uh, it's important that you give it first after you secure the IV access because it takes about 15 to 20 minutes for this drug to work. Uh, after you, you've identified which nostril you're going to go through with your scope, you need to anesthetize that nostril. And for this purposes, we suggest that you use a combination of 5% lignocaine and 0.5% uh, phenylephrine, which comes in this 2.5 uh, mils vial. The next thing which needs to be anesthetized is uh, uh, oropharynx to obtain the gag reflex, and that is achieved by using 10% uh, uh, lignocaine uh, which comes in this uh, vial. The next solution that we recommend you use uh, in order to achieve a spray as you go principle is the 4% topical lignocaine which comes in this uh, dark bottle um, and the, the way that we do it is we draw up uh, one mil into a 10 mil syringe and then we draw some nine to ten mils of air into the syringe so that when you try to uh, inject it into the scope, air then propels the solution and delivers it to the end of the scope. When you're performing the awake fiber optic intubation, you need to consider uh, sedation and analgesia for your patient. Uh, there are different ways of sedating patient. Uh, traditionally, midazolam was used uh, quite often. These days, we recommend you use uh, propofol uh, on the TCI basis and the usual dose that you would consider given is between 1 and 1.5 micrograms per mil. Analgesia could be achieved by simply giving uh, aliquots of uh, fentanyl, although these days remifentanil is a very useful drug and again it could be diluted and used uh, at the dose of uh, 0 0.05 to 0 0.075 uh, micrograms per kilogram per minute. There are different types of accessory equipment that may help you when you are performing the awake fiber optic intubation. Uh, it is very important that you uh, give oxygen to your patient uh, all the time while you're performing uh, awake fiber optic intubation. Different devices are available on the market, but we recommend you use oxygen catheter. This is the single catheter with a soft yellow sponge at the end, which you put into your patient's other nostril, ensuring that oxygen is going um, through all the time while you're performing awake fiber optic intubation. Using nasal specs or oxygen huts and mask uh, could be quite inconvenient for the patient and uh, for the operator. Uh, in order for you to spread the local anesthetic through the nostril or uh, at the back of the tongue, one could use a very effectively mucosal atomization device, which works like this. When you attach a syringe, it gives a very, very nice spray and anesthetizes tissues quite evenly. When patient arrives in the anesthetic room or theatre where the procedure is going to be performed, one should first apply standard monitoring that includes blood pressure, ECG and pulse oximeter. IV access is then established. After that, one needs to decide which nostril to use. In the majority of patients, the right nostril is wider, but this cannot be assumed, and indeed, in our case, the left nostril proved to be larger. After this, and before starting anything else, an oxygen catheter is inserted into the nostril that is not going to be used for intubation, and 4 to 5 liters per minute of oxygen is passed through it. 
The chosen nostril is then anesthetized using 5% lidocaine with 0.5% phenylephrine. To achieve deeper spread of local anesthetic down the nostril and nasopharynx, mucosal atomization device is used, containing 3 to 4 mL of 4% lidocaine. The next step is to spray local anesthetic, usually 10% lidocaine, at the back of the tongue to obtain the gag reflex. Four parts each side. After that, mucosal optimization device is used again to propel 4% lidocaine towards posterior pharyngeal wall <coughs> and larynx. After finishing the local anesthesia of the airway, the actual procedure begins. First, pass the scope through the nostril, trying to stay close to the septum and floor of the nose, as they are the least vascularized areas. Try to go through the inferior nasal meatus, which is usually the widest. You will soon reach the nasopharynx, where you need to turn the tip of the scope up, and it will then emerge into the oropharynx. It is useful at this stage to ask patients to protrude their tongue or open their mouth as that helps to open the airspace. Gently advancing the scope, you will shortly see the epiglottis and the rest of the larynx. At this stage, you need to spray two to three doses of 4% lidocaine, one mil each dose with four mil of air to propel it down to numb epiglottis. Once the patient larynx stops reacting to a spray of local anesthetic, you may proceed further under the epiglottis. Spray again on the vocal cords. And if there is no reaction, advance between them into the trachea. Spray some more local anesthetic down the trachea and advance until you see the carina in the distance. Spray again to numb the carina in case of scope movement downwards while advancing the endotracheal tube. After that, ask your assistant to hold the scope for you and start sliding the endotracheal tube along the scope. Just before passing endotracheal tube through the nostril, apply some KY jelly on the nostril to smooth the insertion. Gently rotate the tube anti-clockwise to insert it into the trachea. Some resistance usually felt at the level of the larynx. Make sure you see the trachea above the carina at all times while inserting the tube. After the tube is in, gently withdraw the scope 
confirming that the end of the endotracheal tube is above the carina. In case endotracheal tube sticks to the scope, try putting one to two mils of water between the tube and the fibrous scope. Attach CO2 monitor to confirm tracheal placement of endotracheal tube. Tips for a wake up fiber optic intubation. Don't forget glycoparolate. Give local anesthetic time to work. Adjust the orientation mark to 12 o'clock position and load the endotracheal tube. Advance the scope close to the septum and the floor of the nose. Identify familiar anatomy and advance slowly. If lost, withdraw until familiar anatomy appears. Keep the target in the center of the screen. Maintain verbal contact with the patient.